right friends welcome back to the first capsule of second week and this topic is with regard to plan and non plan expenditure this classification is going to go away from 2017-18 financial year and why this is initially introduced and why it is no more required those aspects we are going to deal with right so here this plan non plan classification is because of our five year plans five year plans were started and this is the last five year plan please don't forget this is the last five year plan and this is going to end on march 31 2017 and subsequently no more five year plans and this classification of plan non plan emanated from the concept of five year plans right so that is one aspect and the second important aspect please don't forget across the world over basically everyone is interested in capital expenditure as well as revenue expenditure the classification of capital expenditure as well as revenue expenditure is in vogue in several countries and multilateral lenders also interested in capital and revenue in fact if you look at world bank as well as imf they are very much interested in capital part of country's expenditure because of the reason capital expenditure creates assets whereas revenue expenditure does not create any assets and revenue expenditure is basically for day to day working day to day running the administration like salaries subsidies these are all comes under revenue expenditure and for the governments to create some capital assets substantial portion must be capital expenditure so if you see the world experience this capital and revenue expenditure classification is more than sufficient and i have given some salient points with regard to plan and non plan expenditure this from 2017 18 budget government decided to do away with the classification of plan and non plan and from now onwards revenue capital expenditure classification will only remain and the concept of five year plans is the main thesis for plan non plan classification and here it not only includes the central government expenditure but also support provided to the state governments for planned development this is important previously almost uh, till 20 years ago that used to be development expenditure and non developmental expenditure subsequently it was changed to planned expenditure non planned expenditure or you can say plan expenditure and non plan expenditure as per the recommendations of sukhmai chakravarti committee and in the year 2011 an expert committee headed by rangarajan had proposed the distinction between plan and non plan must be abolished for both center and the states right and before going ahead please look into these two organizations planning commission which was established in 1950 no more in existence and it is replaced by niti aayog and if you look at the plan non plan plan expenditure as i have already told you it is basically to deal with long term socio economic goals long term socio economic goals please look into this picture to construct a hospital to construct a dam to construct a national highway this expenditure is capital expenditure if a hospital is constructed it will serve the generations to come if a dam is constructed it will be useful for more than 100 years and future generations will be benefited and that is the main purpose of this capital expenditure please look into this this is to specific schemes and projects for certain desired objectives and this is routed through central ministries to state governments for implementation so one important point is here assets are created that is the meaning of plan expenditure if you look at non plan expenditure non plan expenditure is categorized into non plan revenue non plan capital non plan revenue non plan capital and if you look at how it is classified non plan capital 
that means loans to public sector enterprises, loans to union territories states and for purchase of new defense equipments and modernization. Purchase of defense equipment and modernization comes under non-plan capital expenditure. I am talking about the plan non-plan. This will not be in OG from next financial year and as per the present classification I am talking this non-plan capital expenditure looks at loans to public sector enterprises, loans to UTs or states at the same time defense equipments and modernization and this is non-plan capital expenditure. If you look at non-plan revenue expenditure, this is subsidies, grants to foreign governments, grants to states or UTs. There is a difference between loan and grant. Please do not forget, there is a difference between loan and grant. Grant comes under revenue expenditure, loan comes under capital expenditure. This is the major difference, please understand. Grant is just like father-in-law giving money to son-in-law. Father-in-law giving money to son-in-law is just like grant. It will not be repaid. So, grant means it will not be repaid. So, grant comes under revenue expenditure and at the same time loan comes under capital expenditure. This is the basic difference and pensions, social security, all these things comes under non-planned revenue expenditure and please do not give much importance to this classification at this juncture and please understand this for the conceptual understanding of plan and non-plan and when we discuss what is the difference between capital expenditure and revenue expenditure then it will be quite clear to you. We will discuss in some lecture the difference between capital expenditure, revenue expenditure at the same time we will also discuss about capital receipts and revenue receipts. Right? Then you will be very clear what type of expenditure, what type of revenue will go into what type of head. And please limit your understanding to differentiate between plan and non-plan. Plan expenditure is basically for creation of assets and non-plan expenditure is two types. One is capital expenditure, other one is revenue expenditure under non-plan and I have discussed here these things. And if you look at what are the probable reasons for eliminating this plan non-plan bifurcation for eliminating this non-plan plan bifurcation. I have given some reasons so please go through them. The first and the foremost reason is era of 5 year plans is coming to an end by 31st March 2017. 12th 5 year plan is going to be the last one and it is going to be end on 31st March 2017. So, the classification of plan non-plan basically emanates from the concept of planning under planning commission. So, that is why there is no need of plan non-plan bifurcation. The second point is in the name of a plan expenditure every year governments are concentrating on to show something more than last year and in the process maintenance of assets already created are being suffered badly because in the budget the emphasis of each and every finance minister is to show something more in comparison to last year and in the process what is being happened is maintenance of assets is badly compromised. Please look into this picture. After constructing a hospital, after constructing a highway, maintenance is also very very important and Maintenance comes under revenue expenditure, maintenance of assets comes under revenue expenditure and without properly maintaining the assets, there is no point in creating the assets. So, in the name of increasing this plan expenditure or you can say in the name of incrementalism, this maintenance is being compromised. That is the biggest problem. If you look at the third aspect. The concept of a plan expenditure with the central government support gives little headroom for the state governments. Nowadays, the divisible pool of taxes, 42 percent share is given to state governments by the 14th Finance Commission and this gives more liberty to the state governments. 
and the main reason to give bye bye to planning commission is to look at the decentralized planning centralized planning is not the order of the day and it should be decentralized planning and states should decide whatever they want under these circumstances dictating the terms from an institution like a planning commission is no more required next one is with raise in states share states are becoming more and more independent fiscally and at the same time center is also reducing centrally sponsored schemes to around 30 from 66 now states are becoming more and more independent and what is the need for this classification of plan and non plan and dictating from the top and subsequently passing on those funds to the state this should not be the order of the day then next one is now niti ayog is looking at perspective plan and expenditure based on centralized plans will become a history. Niti Aayog is concentrating on three types of plans and one of them is a perspective plan of 15 years. And under the circumstances, every year allotments and monitoring it in a centralized way is not good. Then now the focus is on shifting to multi-year horizon. With the perspective plan, the focus is shifting to multi-year horizon, not on yearly basis and at the same time budgets based on outputs and outcomes. And in the plan expenditure, how much is being spent on the creation of assets? the costs associated with the creation of assets are not investigated and now the concept is multi-year horizon and at the same time the present day budgeting must focus on outputs and outcomes because of these reasons there is no need of a plan and a non-plan right and if you look at what about the constitutional or statutory provisions I have listed various points. The first one is planning commission was an executive body. Similarly, Niti Aayog is also an executive body. Hence, removing this classification does not require any new act or modifications to the existing acts. And second point is article 1122B of Indian constitution only requires revenue expenditure must be distinguished from other expenditure. Indian constitution does not speak about plan and non-plan. It only speaks about revenue expenditure must be distinguished from other expenditure. And another important aspect is if you look at another constitutional body finance commission, the calculation by the finance commission for a state's share of divisible pool of taxes also does not need plan, non-plan bifurcation. So, from this perspective also, it is not required. If you look at other aspect, FRBM Act of 2003, what is the purpose of FRBM Act? FRBM Act mainly limits the percentage of fiscal deficit and revenue deficit. Fiscal deficit should be limited to 3 percent of GDP. For that purpose, this FRBM Act was constituted and FRBM Act looks at fiscal deficit and revenue deficit and plan non-plan is not required from that perspective also. And the last one as I have already told you multilateral financial institutions like IMF, World Bank, OECD are only interested in classification of capital as well as revenue. They are not interested in plan and non-plan. In fact, multilateral institutions are more interested in capital expenditure. They are only interested in how many assets are created and how the expenditure is being spent for creation of assets. Because multilateral institutions strongly feel creation of assets is the only way for progress. Right? So, I have discussed why plan non-plan is not required and what are the statutory provisions, constitutional provisions, all these aspects. So, after analyzing all these things, in the present day circumstances, there is no need for 
planned non planned classification as it was also suggested recommended by several committees including C. Rangarajan committee in 2011. Right friends, this concludes capsule number 1. Have a nice day and have a nice Sankranti, Pongal, right? Thank you. Thanks a lot.